All right, this video is going to look at, um, basically it's going to recap what we looked at in class on Friday, which is how can you identify potential outliers in your data sets and then um, possibly go back, check to see if they're outliers or not, and decide if you need to remove them from the data set. Um, this is entirely optional. This is not part of the original task, but this is something you may want to do if you're going to shoot for, uh, say, that A or something like that. Usually the A's, or at least the higher A levels, A and A+, plus, are usually reserved for those people who are prepared to go beyond the original task and try something a little bit different. Um, so what I've got here, I've got Juliet's group's data. Um, I've got the graphs. So we're just looking at females here at the moment. Tibia versus height for female and humerus versus height for female. So I'm just going to go through the process of how you'd actually go about identifying outliers. So you remember the rule is... Well, the process is basically you find these things called residuals, which are the distance in a vertical line between each of those points and the line of best fit. So, for instance, here, this point, which I believe is an outlier, certainly looks like it's a long way off the rest of the data. The residual for that would be the distance in a straight line that you would go down from that point until you hit the line of best fit like that, like I'm just like I'm describing with my mouse here. Similarly, for something like this point below the line of best fit, the residual would be how far you'd have to go up in a straight line until you hit the line of best fit. Okay, another way of saying that is it's basically the difference between the predicted height, which is described by this line of best fit, and the actual height for that particular bone length. So if I hover my mouse over this one and I think it's an outlier, you'll see it comes up with the coordinates 37, 179. So 37 is the tibia length, and 179 is the height. So what we're saying here is, what's the difference between, the residual will be the difference between the predicted height for somebody with a bone length of 37 and the actual height of 179. So the first thing I have to do before I do anything else is actually calculate the predicted height for each of these people. So I'm just gonna enter a new column in here called, oops, predicted height. I am not going to do this very prettily. I'm just going to do it quickly. So predicted height. Now into here goes the formula, your line of best fit formula. Because remember that we can use that to predict someone's height based on their bone length. So this little formula here where I'm moving my mouse, y equals 2.4011x plus 77.877, uh, sorry, 887. That's the formula I'm going to use. So into Excel, into the first cell here, I type in equals first, so Excel knows it's a formula. Then I type in 0.24011. Now that's going to be times by x. So I put an asterisk for times, and then the x value is actually this cell here where, where it says 29 for this particular one. So I click in that cell, and then plus 77.887, and then hit enter. Okay, now from there, I want to fill down. So for this one here, I just go to the bottom right-hand corner of that cell until I get the little black cross like that and double click. Um, other thing I might do here as well, just so it looks pretty, make sure it's to the ne nearest whole number because the original height's with the nearest whole number as well. So right-click, choose Format Cells, wait a while. Okay, and then under category you choose number, and where you have decimal places, you click down until you get zero decimal places. Done. Okay, now the residual, spelled like this, R-E-S-I-D-U-A-L. The residual is the actual height, subtract the predicted height. So in other words, it's this height cell, take this predicted height here. So I click into the cell here, I type equals to, to, to let Excel know a formula is coming, click in that one, then take that one. Okay, from there, fill down, and there we go, that's our residual. Now if we scroll down here, oh, something's not right. Bear with me here, people. Hmm. 
something is not right. What have I done wrong? Aha, okay. Sorry, I can see my mistake here. This graph here is tibia versus height, and I've quite clearly clicked in the humerus cell, so just be careful. There we go, looks a little bit better. All right, so there are my residual numbers. If you have a negative residual, that means that the person's height was actually less than their predicted height. So for Marinella here, actual height 155, predicted height 157. So she has a residual of minus two. So she's two centimeters shorter than she should be. Whereas someone like Dulcy, who is a outlier, I can tell that because when I hover on this point here, it says 37, 179. And that's her figures, 37 tibia, 179 height. Dulcie is 12 centimeters taller than she should be, according to just her tibia length. All right, so now we've got our residual points. Again, you may want to make it a little bit tidier than this, but I'm just plowing through this quickly. Now we have our residual points. The next thing we have to do is work out the standard deviation of all of those numbers added together. So below that column with the residuals in it, I type in equals, then ST, it's going to come up with a whole bunch of options from there. Um, I want the one that's called stdevp. So I double click on that and then click and drag so you cover all of these numbers here. Hit equals. Okay. There's a standard deviation number. Now the rule we're going to use here is someone is an outlier if the residual is bigger than twice the standard deviation. So I'm going to Click equals here, I'm going to go two times, click on that, hit enter. Okay, so you might think to yourself, well, two times four is not 8.39, but just remember that what's here has been rounded off, and the actual figure, which probably includes a few decimals, is kept in the cell. So that's my magic number anyway, about 8.4. So I'm looking for someone who's either 8.4 taller, sorry, someone who's more than 8.4 taller, or less than 8.4 shorter than their predicted height. So if we look at this here, the only person for this particular data set who meets that criteria is Dulcy Ross. And that was pretty obvious that she was going to be that line when you looked at that. The only other one I can think of, 31160, who is that? Zainab but she didn't quite make the cut. She was almost an outlier, but not quite. Okay, so Dulcie's quite obviously an outlier for tibia versus height. Um, probably also would find if you did the same process for the humerus versus height, you'd find that she would be for that too, because that's her there again. Um, so what you would do now, firstly, you'd probably want to go back and just, if you can, if you have time, double check those measurements. So if I was Julie, I'd probably go measure her bone length again, if I could, if I had time, and just see if it actually was correct or not. She might just be one of those people that has really long body and short arms and short legs. I don't know. Um, having said that, even if you choose to keep that, if you, even if you decide that that person's measurements were correct and you didn't make a mistake, um, what thing you can do in your results is just see what the effect would be of removing that particular outlier from your data set. So what you'd probably do, and I'll do this here very quickly now, is take your original data set, copy it. So I've highlighted all of those, I've right clicked, I've chosen copy. Um, I might just click down the bottom here and make a new tab. Paste it into there. And then I'm going to just remove Dulcie completely from there. And then going to redo my tibia graph. So insert, scatter. I'm not going to make this pretty. Choose that chart layout. All right. So you'll see here we've got a new line of best fit um, and a new linear regression equation and a new R squared value. So what we're interested in here is having removed that outlier, does our R squared value improve or not? So it's 0.59 here. And originally it was 0.53, so it's gone up 
by a reasonable amount just by removing that one outlier. Um, so that's basically all there is to it. Hopefully this makes sense. Please contact me if it doesn't. Um, and just a reminder that this is optional, but it's probably a good idea if you have completed the rest of the task. Go back and try to, doing that as an extension. All right, I'm out.